Hi guys, Jordan from PMP Campus. Just going to do your uh, hand of a video on your hobby. Um, so we're starting with the bonnet. So you've got the engine battery here on the left hand side, which is a nice big battery. Um, looks reasonably new as well, actually. Um, you've got the engine coolant sits up here. The power steering fluid. The engine oil goes in this cap here, and your uh, you check your oil engine oil from here. It's lipstick. Um, you have got a couple of relays and fuses underneath this if you ever needed to get to them. Your brake fluid attached to the servo at the back. Washer fluid goes in down here. Uh, and then this is the top of your air filter. Um, but to be honest, there's not really much else to show. I mean, there's a couple of drains at the back, but that's about it for actually under the bonnet. Um, everything looks in nice, good working order, actually. Normally these kind of bushes are a bit worn out, but they're all, all good. Uh, so it all looks nice and new, actually. Um, so here we've got the uh, diesel cap. So that's just literally putting the ignition key in there, turning it 90 degrees, and then this will turn out as well. And that opens up by pushing on this side. I'll just show you. So left-hand drive. Normally the um, uh, bonnet release would be on the other side, obviously under the steering wheel, but it's just here on this one underneath the steering column. Right, so we start on the uh, driver's side, so the left-hand side, near side. We've got the uh, boiler vent here. So if you had your boiler on, then you'd feel hot air coming out through here. Um, you would also feel hot air coming out if you had your heating on as well, um, because it's the same unit. Uh, if you wanted to hook up at a campsite, you hook up just here, plug it in like that. Obviously the hab checks have all been done, so that's all been checked. Um, and actually on the hab sheet itself, I have written how many amps each appliance pulls, so you can work out what you can have on, what you can't at the same time. Um, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that, but that's the fresh water inlet. Um, so if you ever wanna you know, fill up your fresh water tank, that's how you do it. And then to lock it, push in and round like so, and then put that key in, turn it 90 degrees again, just the same as the diesel cap. Uh, and then that'll be locked in place. Um, the toilet, so that's a fresh water flush. So you haven't got to worry about any separate flush area or anything like that. Uh, it's just a case of lifting up on this yellow lever underneath and then pulling towards you. And then that's all been lubricated, uh, you know, the whole seal and stuff. Um, when you do come to emptying it out, you should always hold this button down here it's a pressure release valve, it lets it all come out a lot, yeah, a lot easier. Um, but that's all been cleaned. So that's good to go. That's where you put your blue toilet chemical in there. Only about a cap full. And then to lock this one again, just put the key in there. Same again, 90 degrees. And that's that. Um, you've got a little external water point here. Um, so if you took that cap off like that. And you can use your external point there. Uh, pop that cap back on. Pop that in there. Close that up. So the lock is at the back. I don't think there's actually too much to show, if I'm honest. I don't think there's anything to show you in here. It's just basically storage, um, but plenty of it. Uh, so, yeah, not much to show you in there. You have got little caps on the top there which hold it, uh, hold the lockers up. Bike crack at the back, nice and simple. Just literally open this up, pull these bits over. Um, in fact, you can take them off, really. Um, pull them down and then pop your bikes on, grab them from the top with these and pop the uh, actual tires or the wheels in, grab them with those. And then that's it, that's literally all you need to do to use that. Pop that back up, pop this in. That's nice and secure, pop that down. And that's that, you know, ready for driving there. Um, again, that's the same same locker there. Let me just have a look under here, so. Uh, I'll just show you down there, actually. The, the, uh, the wastewater does come out underneath here, um, but the actual waste, the tap, is there. All right, so if I turn that, that must be empty where, where I did the actual have check but basically it's that lever in there which is turned facing upwards at the moment 
So it's open in this, you know, look like that. And if I if you turned it up, so it's like looking upright, then it means it's uh, it's closed off. But it's basically literally just a little bit of pipe underneath. Nothing nothing exciting. Um, the gas locker you got space for two six kilo propane bottles or two seven kilo butane bottles. However, you would need to get a different type of uh, regulator if you want a propane. Uh, at butane, sorry, this is a propane regulator. I have had to run a bit of new hose here um, because everything that was in here was totally out of date. So I've had to, you know, redo the, the lot. Um, so you got about five years on this hose and 10 years on the uh, regulator. To turn the bottles on, you go round to the left. So clock, uh, anti-clockwise is to turn it on. And clockwise, round to the right like this is off. So anti-clockwise for on, clockwise for off. If you leave it all the way on, um, then when you come to it, then you'll realize that there's only one way it will go, which is round to the right. So then you won't get confused. And again, all the lockers got these same little locks on them so you can keep them open. Um, I'll leave that on for now uh, and show you a few bits working. So really cool layout in these hobbies, I must admit. I do, you know, I, I am a fan of their uh, design. Um, so three separate windows there. I will say one thing, if you are parked up close to anything on that side, or in fact in close to any of the windows, because they work on a latch, you will need to make sure that you're not too close to something on that side because if you pull the window out then you need to push it out a little bit further just to bring it back in so if you pull up next to something like really tight and try and open the window you might well find that you can't then open it a bit further to close it you you know you'll get you'll get to grips with what i mean by that but you know it's not the end of the world if that does happen because you just take these two top screws off and then this hinge just comes out but you know to save yourself having to do that make sure that you've got plenty of space you know by the side of you so that you can easily put it all the way open or all the way shut um but other than that you know they're, they're simple you know just just you push them out and then let them drop and they'll stay out open open up and close if that makes sense but yeah so just try not to be too close to anything else um if you're trying to open those side windows same goes for all of them actually every single one um so yeah that's the windows um i'll start up here because obviously it's all german um but i have written on the hab sheet i've tried i've tried to uh try not to laugh at my uh diagrams that i've drawn out but i have tried to draw out which you know what all of these do um so basically this one here again not going to try and pronounce it but that's the main on and off switch for everything so everything on 12 volt if you switch that down to where it is now facing down then that means that all of your lights and ignition and all that kind of stuff will work um, these two is basically just your batteries so just telling you you know uh, uh, lights sorry lights uh, they, they are light switches this is your water pump um, and this one is for your uh, blown air heating I believe but I have read it on the sheet but um, and the rest of them so test is the other one you need to know so if you hold this button down it tells you how many volts is in each of your batteries um, and how much water is in each tank. So at the moment we've got no water in the fresh tank and no water in the in the waste tank. Um, but they're nice clear dials, which is nice. Um, all of the, these two switches, like I said, they do the lights, but they all have got their own individual switches as well. So, you know, this switch under here does that light in there. And this light here has got its own switch. So you only need to have a little, you know, look around and a work out uh, to work out which ones you like and which ones you don't like um, to have on at night, you know. Um, and it's just a, you know, just a case of working out which ones you like and, and don't, um, which will come pretty quickly, really. Um, skylight, just above my head, just before I forget, push in on this button and then pull down and all the way out so that it goes up there. Or you could have it going into this little latch here or the next one as well so it's just a little bit open and then pull it out and then closing it all the way up and that's it okay so you haven't got any ignition on your three hob rings okay so you will need a lighter or a clicker or something like that um 
again it's, it's the same kind of thing you just need to work out which one does which there's no diagram but you, you know it's pretty easy to work out left hand side one does this one middle one uh, i believe does this one and the right hand side does up here but you know you, you can hear it and you'll see it but anyway that's something to work out really um i've got the fridge on on gas at the moment but if i just switch it all the way off so i can show you from scratch so it's a three-way fridge so it works on on either the hookup cable engine or gas okay i say engine but um, really i mean sort of leisure battery but basically if you try and use it on this one now so the engine's not running at the moment if i have it here at the moment nothing's happening as soon as i switch the engine on it will start cooling the fridge down via its 12 volt element um that won't get the fridge cold on its own especially if you've got things in it um so you need to either get the fridge cold first with a hookup cable in pointing towards here or via the gas which i'll show you how to use in a sec perhaps the night before you go away somewhere you know or at least a few hours beforehand uh, and then when you are driving just remember to switch it down there and then when you get to where you're going everything will still be cold um but that's the way that, that they work there's the same with every fridge um so the gas couldn't be easier all right so there's no there's no push button ignition or anything like that so if i switch it down to gas you know, it's gonna be hard to show you because it'll probably light up so quickly but all you need to do is basically if i switch over to the gas now let's so if i go down to gas straight away you see that light there that's the igniter okay so that's telling you when the igniter is, is clicking all you need to do is push in so it's stopped clicking now because i pushed in and it's lit up and slowly let go on that and so as long as that isn't clicking and and flashing then it's lit all right and you don't really need to move this that's perfectly fine where it is that'll still get freezing cold um but that's it that's all you need to do nothing more make sure that, that isn't clicking if it starts clicking again it means the flame's gone out but you've got a thermocouple on that anyway so it won't let loads of gas to pump through but that's literally it and if you want to turn it all the way off just like that that's it so you can put a little pin in here as well it's basically a travel catch so you can put a little something in there to to catch in this hole uh but there's no there's no peephole or anything like that to look through to make sure that it's lit it's just literally a case of making sure that light's definitely out um let's see if we've got anything else to show you so you've got a couple of bits in here so you've got the gas manifold here so uh let me just work that out so you can leave this one how it is because this is basically coming from the gas uh the actual uh locker itself um in fact no that's not right so this here is coming from the locker all right so this one here is for your heater fridge and the cooker uh, and there must be some kind of uh, external point somewhere um, but you can leave that however way you want it's just basically just an isolator um, you can leave that like that makes no difference really um, but basically say for example if you're on holiday and you thought oh, I've got a problem with my my fridge on gas then you can just come to here switch it off and then just carry on with your holiday and forget about it because that will stop the gas coming from there to your fridge okay so that, you know it, they do work really well they won't let a single bit through um all right so that's that there let's see anything else in there so you can see the top of your tank in here if you want to take that cap off and have a look in there right let's see what else we've got bathroom so again nice sort of good sized bathroom you've got a, a button to use your uh, your flush there so it's literally a case of pushing that button and if i just show you it working pumps around and then it can splash when you open it up so just close that up open that up like that and then close it back up if you find that you're on the outside of the van one day and you're trying to pull the cassette out and it won't come any further than say two or three inches then you'll find that you've left the flap open okay so you just need to come in here and close the flap up like i just did 
and then go back outside and it will just come out straight away. Um, all of this has all been checked, you know, there's no leaks, anything like that. Um, yeah, that's about it for the bathroom, nothing nothing to show you really. Um, if you're ever wondering what this button up here does, it's something you, know, you wouldn't normally really notice. It took me a little while to work out what it was doing, but if you hear it, I'll touch it on now. Strange noise, but then I realise it's this uh, little mechanism here. So, I don't know, there must be a... If I'm honest, I'm not really sure what that does, but uh, that's what it's wired up to anyway. Magic safe it says, isn't it? Waker. Not sure. There'll probably be some paperwork for it. Um, okay, so what else have we got? Oh, okay, there you go. So your heating and hot water is all via this little dial here, Trumatic C, nice reliable unit. So literally this one on the left-hand side, all that does, it doesn't actually do anything on its own. All this does is choose how hot you want your water whether you want it 40 degrees or 60 degrees, it makes no difference apart from the fact that if you had it at 60, then you could kind of use it as hot water for a bit longer because you'd have more cold water in your feed, you know? So you could have it running on a bit longer, I suppose, and not, you know, have a few more showers out of it rather than 40. But if you just wanted it for sort of washing up and all that kind of thing, then you could just leave it at 40 and it'll get hotter a lot quicker, obviously. Um, so that's all that side does. Uh, this here is a temperature gauge and there'll be a little thermostat placed around the van somewhere, a little black, little tiny black thermostat. Um, so if you, you know, just for example, we leave it to 20 degrees, that's kind of normal, I think. Um, if I flick this down, then actually if I just switch it on up here, hold on, so you got have this button on. So, I'll go back off for a minute then. So if I just go down, you'll see here, you've got 60, 40, and this shower means hot water, okay? So wherever you see that shower, that means hot water. So if I click down, you get this yellow light. So at the moment, this, this lot's not doing anything, all right? Doesn't make any difference until you go up to the top, which is heating as well. But, so I've gone down at the moment. So I've chosen 40 degrees. And I've gone down and that's 60 or 40 hot water. So it's 40 degrees hot water and nothing else right now. Okay. So it's just lit up now. I've just heard it. So this light will go out when it gets to its temperature as well. Uh, but, you know, you don't really need to see that. You can, you can tell after, if, you, if you leave it sort of 15, 20 minutes, it'll be up to its top temperature anyway. Um, and that's all you need to do. And if you want to use your heating, all the way up to the top and that's when this style here actually comes into its own um, and then you know that's where it will get to its desired temperature um, so yeah this little button this little sort of sign there means heating basically in the traumatic world um, so yeah so that's lit up at the moment yeah you know, that's what you need to do this is the temperature and then this is the temperature of the water up is for both down is for just hot water and obviously the yeah you know, the fan for the heating will run on its own. You don't need to do anything else with that. And then back to the middle is all off. It just reminded me when I was um, talking about that. So again, so this one here is for your actual heating and hot water. That's how you need to you need to have this one on like it, like it is to be able to use that dial. Um, but before you do that, before you get into the van and start playing around with the uh, the hot water or the heating you do need to make sure you've got some water in the boiler so you need to come to the tap and just pull the cold wait for the you know the pump to start running and once you've done that and start getting no sort of like big air bubbles and stuff like that turn it to your hot and make sure you get the same thing uh, just make sure that's all on so basically all you need to do is just come in here and make sure you don't get any big air bubbles coughing out of the sink um, and until you do find you know there's no air in the system that kind of thing and you'll be good to go to use your uh, heating and hot water and all that um, but that's basically it's like a, a bit of a fail safe kind of thing because 
if you if you try to heat your, your kettle up at home with no water in it then obviously it's going to go bang um i mean it's not quite that dramatic with these but if it did go wrong then it's you know it's really not cheap to fix them so if you just come into the van first and make sure that you pull your water through make sure there's no air in the system and if you if you want to like i do uh, but if you want to you can do it at both taps both the, the kitchen and the bathroom as well and actually the toilet because that's off the same system too so if you just if you're going to be using the van for a little while you might as well just come in and do that just to make sure there's definitely no air you know hanging about um because really the main reason for that to be honest obviously is to keep your boiler safe but also if you try to use your hot water and there's air in the system if you have the boiler on it will when you go to pull the hot water through the tap it'll cough and splatter all over the place and it's really not nice when that sort of it hits your hand that kind of you know hot boiling hot water it's not very nice to uh, have that splashing around so uh, yeah if you just make sure that you do that um and that's really about it um uh, yeah so the main thing so if you make sure there's there's no air in the system for that make sure that you've uh you know you know where your fridge is and yeah you know, where it is and make sure that your gas is all the way on then uh really i think it'd be good to go there's not much else to show you all the lights really have got their own switches so you can just work out uh you know work them out for yourself really you know just which ones you want and which ones you don't want on um but yeah the hab check's all done all went through nice and easy everything was nice and uh simple um but yeah so i don't think there's much else to show you if i I'll just sit in the cab and make sure when you um if i just start it up i just switch all these bits off Doo -doo -doo. obviously when you're driving you want to turn your gas off before you do it um but just for for show and use sake um so the reversing camera comes on as soon as you start her up so if i popped it in reverse now it doesn't really make much difference you know it would just stay on but once you turn the engine off you don't need to worry about it because if i just show you now i switched it off but it does stay on uh, i'll do that for probably about i think it's about 30 seconds or so uh, and then it will switch itself off all right there's no you don't have to worry about that uh, or i have just found this switch down here <laughs> so yeah so if you want to turn it off manually then you can do so from down here but like i say if you if we just watch this for a sec it should just go off on its own because the uh the power that it's come off is a good one so when it when the vehicle stays off for a, a certain amount of time it will turn itself off there you go like that all right so you don't have to worry about that button it will just do its own thing you know if, or if you if you're driving you think it's putting you off then you can just switch it off from down there um, indicators at the front and then this is your main main beam <laughs> if i can speak properly your main beam uh for your lights so yeah so uh, indicating at the front and then wipers at the, on the right hand side but yeah, I've actually driven this van myself and it drives absolutely perfect, really nice. Um, yeah, there's no knocks or bangs or anything, so it's a, a nice solid van. And if I'm honest with you, these hobbies are brilliant. Uh, you know, so sort of rugged and ready to go for whatever you want to do. Uh, go, great for wild camping as well. So um, yeah, so I think I've covered everything. And if you think I've missed anything out, then obviously let us know. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you soon for you to collect your van. Thanks very much.